The 49ers are arguably the best team in the NFL right now, and that is partially thanks to Big Cock Brock. So today, we're gonna say F Jimmy G, F Trey Lance, we're going with Brock Purdy. But huge, huge shout out to VVS HD for the suggestion. Go drop them a sub, I have already done so, of course. And if you want a shout out just like that one, be sure to like, sub, and let me know what team to do next. That's literally all you have to do. And you'll get a sub from me, a shout out, and subs from many others. And speaking of liking and subbing, let's see if we can hit 110 likes and get to 1,350 subs. I know we can do that. We have literally doubled, over doubled our sub count in the last 28 days, so thank you very much for that. And imagine if everyone liked and subbed, we would literally hit like 2,500 subs, 1,500 likes, and you're part of that someone, so be sure to do that. But that's enough plugging. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. This was an amazing rebuild, probably the most successful one I've ever done. No spoilers, but I really think you'll enjoy it. So let's get into today's video. Here we are with head coach Mikey McDingle taking a look at this 49ers team. Now this isn't just any 49ers team, this is going to be the 49ers team with Brock Purdy, big cock Brock. Now look, I don't need to, I don't, I don't mean to toot my own horn, uh, suck my own cock. I really, really liked that pick when they took him as Mr. Irrelevant because I was a bigger Brock Purdy fan than most. I thought he kind of looked like a pro-ready type of quarterback, and I thought he would thrive in the system. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to say he's thrived. I mean, he's been good, but it's not like he's been elite elite, like let's slow down a little bit, but he's been legitimately pretty decent. And now the 49ers have an interesting scenario here. What do they do next year? Do they roll with Jimmy G once again? Do they try Trey Lance? Or do they go with Brock Purdy? It's a legitimate question. Outside of that, though, this team obviously has amazing players like Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk has been really good, George Kittle, Trent Williams, even Elijah Mitchell is very good. And defensively, this is a really nice team as well. This is like the better part of their team, even though their offense is great. They have Nick Bosa, Fred Warner, Dre Green. Greenlaw. Traverius Ward has been one of the better corners this year. Like, this is a very good and very complete team, which pains me a little bit as a Seahawks fan, but clearly this is a very good team. Now, I did call them overrated in the offseason because I was worried about this interior offensive line, and I was worried that a young Trey Lance behind that line would not do well, but he got hurt anyways, and they threw Jimmy G and Brock Purdy in there, and the offensive line ended up being better than I thought, so sucks to be me, I guess. <laughs> but that's enough talking about this team. I can do more of that later. Let's get into this rebuild, and I might actually just trade these two QBs right now. Let's try to find some trade partners. So for Trey Lance, I think a team that would make a lot of sense is the, I almost said 49ers, the Jets. Obviously, the 49ers wouldn't trade Trey Lance in real life, so this is probably the most unrealistic part of this rebuild, but there's literally no point in us keeping him because we're not going to use him. We're going with Brock Purdy no matter what. I feel like this isn't fair for us. I mean, Trey Lance was a top five pick like a year ago. I wonder if they would give us our their first round pick straight up because this won't be top four. No, they will not. Okay, <laughs> not even close. Will they even give us this? Okay, they give us that. I am fine with that. It's not a lot of value, but you got to remember this team traded away picks for Christian McCaffrey as well. So it's nice to get some of those picks back. And also the reason I'm trading him to the Jets is because the Jets have Robert Sala. They love former 49ers like DJ Reed, Lakin Tomlinson, Quan Alexander. I mean, I guess they don't like them as much as like the Dolphins do. I guess this team more so likes former Seahawks, but hey, it is what it is. I, I don't know. It makes sense to me. Why did I even try that? My mind just went blank and I just did this. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. I think a second round pick for Jimmy G is fair. He's been pretty solid this year when he played. So we get a second for Jimmy G. That's a pretty good trade for us. These are basically just free picks because obviously we're not going to use these two QBs like I was saying, so these should really help out in building the future of the team. Not that this really matters, but Christian McCaffrey's mentoring Tyree and Davis Price and gave him star dev. I mean, Ty, he's not going to play like at all, but I guess it's good to have as like a third running back. I don't know. I wish he could have mentored Elijah Mitchell to superstar. I don't know if he can even do that, but I, I, I'll take it. It's whatever. Hmm. Um, maybe the Brock Purdy experiment will be... Uh, 
uh, harder than I expected. Because at the mid-season point of year one, we are one in six. How are the Rams five and one? I uh, This game is gonna give me like an aneurysm or something. I don't know. Let's see how Brock Purdy is doing. It looks like pretty bad. Um, 1,500 yards, seven touchdowns, six interceptions. Let's see where he ranks in the league in terms of passer rating for starters. Because I'm guessing he's like close to dead last. So Gino and Davis Mills are having terrible years. He's like sixth from the bottom, so he's like 26th. Not ideal, but he isn't a great overall, to be fair. So I guess we'll just try to develop him into a good player, and hopefully he plays better. But in terms of re-signings here, honestly, Jimmy Ward, my least favorite player in the league in real life. How's Mike McGlinchey doing this year? Let's see. Only three sacks allowed. You know, to be completely honest, I think I remember re-signing him in the last time I did the 49ers, and I ended up very much regretting it. But we'll give him neutral. We'll see if he takes that. He just doesn't want to be here. And honestly, I don't know if I want him here because I don't trust him. Mitch Wishnowski will go like four years or something. I just don't want to deal with having to get another punter. Honestly, everybody else though are either like lower level starters or backups. Aziz Al Shair, I'll try to re-sign. We'll see if he takes neutral. Negotiation, not negotiating on the years. Up it or move on? Wow, what a dickhead. Okay. Well, we'll have to up the years, which doesn't matter. I mean, it's going to be a three or four year rebuild no matter what, but there are a few more starters here, but they're lower levels, so we'll see if they perform well, and if they do, we'll re-sign them, but if not, we'll move on. So let's get to the end of year number one, and hopefully we can finish a little stronger than this. I don't know. We'll see. So this isn't exactly an ideal start to the rebuild. At the end of year number one, we finished six and 11. Now still better than my favorite team, the Seattle Seahawks, but hey, still not great. Let's check out some of the stats this year. So Brock Purdy ended up throwing 4,000 yards, 24 touchdowns, 14 picks. Ended up finishing much better than he started. This isn't honestly all that bad. Up to a 69 overall, nice. But we'll see how he develops and performs through here. It would be nice for him to get a star dev. I don't know if he will. I don't know if he did quite good enough, but we'll see. Christian McCaffrey didn't get many touches at all. At least not as many as he should. At 994 yards, 4.5 yards per carry, 11 touchdowns. Not bad, but didn't get many touches. Obviously, you know this team likes to run a lot of different players, so it makes sense, but still. Debo Samuel ended up with 1,100 yards, 9 touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk with almost exactly as many as Debo Samuel with 5 touchdowns. Juwan Jennings ended up with 850 yards, 7 touchdowns. George Kittle with only 600 yards and 1 touchdown. That's a little weird. That doesn't make any sense. Blocking wasn't all that good. Trent Williams and Mike McGlinchey were not great. Aaron Banks wasn't great. Really, our only good lineman was our worst lineman in Spencer Beer. Everyone else was pretty bad. Defensively, Fred Warner led the team with 148 tackles, Dre Greenlaw with 127 tackles for loss, 19 from Nick Bosa, 15 from Javon Kinlaw, very good year from him. Well, pretty good, not many sacks, but still. Eric Armstead with 14, and Drake Jackson with 12. Now, in terms of sacks, 13 from Nick Bosa, which is good, but I'm pretty sure he already has more than that in real life, and normally he ends with like 25 sacks in the first year. This is like half of that. Eric Armstead with 11, he had a very good good year, by his standards, standards at least. Only three from Javon Kinlaw, and only two from Drake Jackson, who was one of our starting pass rushers. For interceptions, we only had five combined on the season, two from Jason Verrett, one each from Traverius Ward, Talanoa Hufanga, and Aziz Alshair, who had zero pass deflections. That's fun. I kind of regret re-signing him already. Or wait, I guess I didn't. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Let's check out yearly awards. So MVP goes to Joe Burrow, Matt Stafford up there. Really odd list that this year. No 49ers, obviously. Offensive player of the year goes to the white boy Cooper Cup, as literally always. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald, as always, unless it is, of course, Nick Bosa, who is at number eight. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Drake London, Brock Purdy down at three. I was hoping he could maybe sneak it out, but just wasn't quite good enough. Did definitely turn it around towards the end of the year, but not quite good enough. Aiden Hutchinson wins defensive rookie of the year. Drake Jackson at number seven, even though he wasn't great. I wonder if actually Brock Purdy was up there for best QB. I doubt it, but he could have been. Okay, no, he was not. So in the Super Bowl, the Buffalo Bills take down the New Orleans Saints 23 to 19. That's a weird Super Bowl. Also, shout out Monsters Inc. 23-19. Um, I don't know about the Saints. I don't even know about the Bills making it. I mean, maybe, but they've been a little disappointing this year, like I expected. I mean, they've still been good, but still. That's definitely an interesting Super Bowl. We have some upgrades. Are these just gonna be practice squad players? Yeah. So in in terms of re-signings, honestly, I don't know if 
I'm gonna bring anybody here back. Mike McGlinchey let up 10 sacks. I guess Jason Verrett got, got the most interceptions on our team, but he's already 32. I wanna bring in younger players. Jimmy Ward wasn't great, and I don't like him, and he's old, plus ratio. And then a lot of the players here are just kind of depth pieces. I mean, Aziz Al Shair was pretty bad, plus I doubt he's gonna take it even if we offer him one. I guess I'll re-sign Jawan Jennings as like a fourth receiver, but even then, he's not interested. I'll try very player friendly. Okay, he does take it. I guess he'll be a fine fourth receiver. Jake Brendel wasn't all that good. Yeah, everyone else here, I'm just gonna let go. So let's get to free agency, and we have a decent amount of money to work with. So in free agency, oh, it's kind of weak. I hate how weak the year one free agencies are. I mean, they're never really good at all. There just isn't much for us to work with here at all. So in free agency, like I said, there isn't a lot for us to work with, but this is the best I could kind of come up with. So Jamel Dean is going to be the first player I'm going to go after. We need corner. Like, let's take a look at the roster real quick. It's not a fantastic one. I'll just say that. I mean, it is, but there are definitely holes now. So, I mean, defensively, we need a safety, linebacker, probably a pass rusher, definitely a corner. I mean, I guess I could roll with this group. Corner might actually not be the biggest need now that I look at it. Um, we'll still try to get Jamel Dean. And then offensively, we definitely just need offensive line. I mean, the only player here who was really good was Spencer Beerford, and he's only a 69 overall, which again, nice, but not nice at the same time, because he's only a 69 overall. But that'll probably be a main focus in the draft more than anything, because I mean, looking at it, there aren't really any players here I want to get. The only one I could maybe go after is Nate Davis. I mean, at guard, there's like Eric Flowers, 31-year-old Juwan James, like I'm good. Jack Conklin, I checked, he allowed 14 sacks last year. I am good. If I were to get Nate Davis, it would be at like center, and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. I'll try it. It's kind of weird. Not a super realistic move, but we'll we'll see. And then of course the other players I'm going for, which I am now realizing I forgot to mention, are Yannick Ngakwe. Obviously we had like no pass rush outside of Eric Armstead and Nick Bosa. I want to get a good pass rusher in there. I believe Yannick Ngakwe had like nine sacks last year. Here at least not in real life. I mean maybe he did. I don't know how many he had. I I have no idea. But I mean in the game last year he had like nine sacks or something, which is nice. Nate Davis, like I was showing, and then Jelani Tavai just to be kind of a band-aid at linebacker. So we'll see if any of these four sign right off the bat. They all sign, and we get Jamel Dean, Yannick Ngakwe, and Jelani Tavai. That's pretty good. This is honestly best case scenario, because I was kind of iffy on getting Nate Davis, and this fills some pretty big holes for the team, so I'm very much happy with this. I'm actually gonna try two more moves, just kind of for fun. Deontay Hardy and Taylor Rapp, we have a big hole at safety, obviously. Not quite as big as your mother's for me, but a pretty big hole. And then Deontay Hardy doesn't make a lot of sense in this scheme, but it would be fun just to get a good deep threat in here. I like Deontay Hardy slash Deontay Harris in real life. We do have the lead for him. We do kind of have a hole at receiver, and it would be better to not have to worry about filling that hole through the draft because Deontay Harris does have a star dev and is only 25. It would be basically like drafting a pretty good older player just for more money. So let's see if either of these two sign. And it looks like Deontay Harris slash Deontay Hardy signs. I'm just not used to calling him Deontay Hardy, so that's a pretty big pickup. And then Taylor Rapp, I mean, I don't know if we're gonna get him. I don't know how much I care. He does sign with us though, so that is a pretty big get. Now really, the only thing we need to fill is offensive line, and this is a pretty complete team. That's kind of crazy. Through one free agency, this team is like kind of filled out. So we have a fifth year option for Javon Kinlaw before we get into the draft. I'm not gonna pick this one up. I think for obvious reasons, just not worth it. Was decent for us last year, but not enough pass rush as I would like, and just hasn't been all that good in real life. Has been injured, but also when he played, just hasn't been that good. So we're not gonna pick it up. I will more than likely re-sign him, but we're not gonna pick up his fifth year. And we have another one. What is this gonna be for? Brandon Ayuk. I will pick up that one. He's been very good in real life this year. Definitely want that one. Has been their best receiver. So we will pick that one up. So here in the draft, we do not pick in the first round, obviously. The Texans have the number one overall pick, which makes sense. But yeah, I kinda thought we didn't have a first round pick. I don't remember what happened to their first round pick. Did they trade it up with the Dolphins to get Trey Lance? If so, then I think I kind of got scammed for trading Trey Lance for only a two and a four, but hey, it is what it is. That's fine. But let's sim to our first pick, which is the sixth pick in the second round, which is 38th overall, I guess. And let's see what we can do here. Now, I have no idea what has been happening with Madden lately, especially with the 
draft classes because the order of some of the players has been so weird lately like it's been just flipping everybody around and I, I don't know it's just really weird like why I don't know it's just really really weird I think with our first pick we are going to go Darnell Wright to be our new right tackle looks like an overall pretty good player good run blocker definitely a bigger lineman at 6'6 335 so kind of makes sense for this scheme at least for the right tackle I guess kind of doesn't but I'm trying to like you know make it make sense let's take him and he has hidden dev he should slide in and be a great right tackle for us a good replacement for Mike McGlinchey we still need more linemen at least one more but this is a good start and I realized I didn't record because I'm stupid but I took Noah Sewell with our last pick I really wish I would have pressed record but yeah he should be a good player for us I said he is a player out of Oregon the 49ers love their former ducks and just makes a lot of sense because we do have a hole at linebacker is a pretty good scheme fit so that should be a good pick for us and I think with the last pick I'm gonna take we're gonna go Emil Akior we're gonna play him at center it kind of makes sense he's only 6'3 307 obviously not the most powerful guy in the world so should be a pretty good center for us let's take him and he has normal dev only 79 strength but should be a decent player we'll have to see so here's a recap of the draft we did very well considering what we were working with so Darnell Wright is only a 70 overall but he does have that dev trait of course should be a very good right tackle throughout the rebuild we'll see how he performs we could end up replacing him I have no idea but does have a dev trait is already a decent overall so should turn out good Noah Sewell is a 75 overall I'm very surprised we got him where we did I didn't think he would fall there but yeah should be a pretty good fit just overall well balanced player will start for us in year one so I'm very happy with that pick and another starter in Emil Akior playing him at center we'll see how that goes at 6'3 307 so that makes sense I do like him in real life but I don't think the consensus on him is super high I think he's projected like fifth round or something that's what I see I saw one place projecting him second but we'll see I don't know should be a good center for us if not it's not hard to replace outside of that just a few flyers down here I guess Davis Allen Kayvon Merriweather Charlie Thomas mostly just depth players I do think Merriweather has star dev or hidden at least so that's interesting but yeah overall very good draft and let's get into year number two so super quick before we get into year number two again be sure to like and subscribe helps me out a ton and it's super easy for you to do again 110 likes 1350 subs trying to hit 1500 by the end of the year the goal was 1k before the end of the year but we hit that a while ago so thank you for that but something I saw and I thought was crazy is only 78 percent or no sorry only 21.4 percent of the people that watch my videos are subscribed so people are watching like all the way through and just not doing it so be sure to do it I would appreciate if you did it and I mean if you apparently the watch time is pretty high so apparently y'all are enjoying them so just be sure to subscribe I would appreciate it very much try to make that number not so gross also 0.3 percent of my viewers are females so let's go um we getting hella bitches out here and what it probably is is some kid watching on their mom's account so that's fun all right here is a look at the team going into year number two of the rebuild now honestly it's a touch worse than last year technically but we are younger so obviously Brock Purdy going into year number two is at a 68 overall 69 with morale nice awful haircut I don't know what that is but overall looking pretty good decently accurate not great awareness but looks just really well rounded I feel like he deserves better awareness to be fair but I don't know we still have all of our studs here Christian McCaffrey Debo Samuel Trent Williams George Kittle the only thing really different is this offensive line adding Emila Kior and Darnell Wright replacing Mike McGlinchey and uh I don't know if his name is gonna come to me right now I, I tried my best the current starting 49ers center I, I have no idea I names are hard when I first wake up just like something else is hard when I first <laughs> That's a bad joke. I'm, uh. Defensively here, though, it is a bit different. No more Jimmy Ward. We're replacing him with Taylor Rapp. We added Noah Sewell. No more Aziz Alshair. We added Jamel Dean. We added Yannick Ngakwe. It's a pretty amazing looking defense. Hopefully we can get more dev traits because we have literally no superstars. We have two X factors and the rest are all stars. I don't know what Noah Sewell has. He might have superstar. I don't know, but we'll see. But with that, let's get to the midseason point of year number two and hopefully we can do better than last year. Okay, much better start this year. At the mid-season point of year number two, we are five and two. Big upgrade from year number one. I think we were one and six at the mid-season point of year 
either one. I'm having a hard time remembering. It was yesterday. I just woke up today, so give me a break. We have some upgrades here. Emila Kior gets one up to a 70 overall. Not bad. I see we beat the Steelers 10 to 0. That's an ugly score. At least we won, though. But let's see. We have some re-signings here. I'm not really sure what we even need to do. Oh, hmm. Um, well, it definitely looks like we're gonna have to tag Nick Bosa. So we'll offer him this, obviously, just so we can tag him. Well, this team aligns with my interests, this offer certainly doesn't, obviously. So at the end of the year, we'll definitely try to tag him. So that means Javon Kinlaw and Eric Armstead are most likely gone. I don't think there are any other starters here, so that's good at the very least, but it still sucks that we're gonna lose those two. But hopefully we can get to tag Nick Bosa. We do have a trade offer for Jelani Tavai. I don't think I'm gonna take this though, because we are doing well right now. I hate how there are no pick offers here. I don't know if that's intentional or what, but this doesn't make any sense. I don't know why it's always like this. But let's get to the end of year number two and let's see how we can finish out. Okay, at the end of year number two, we finish 10 and seven. Not bad at all. We have a lot of scenarios here. I'll get to those in a minute. That is probably for Trent Williams, which sucks. I hope he doesn't end up retiring, but he normally does around this time. But let's check out some of the stats. I wanna see how we did. So Brock Purdy wasn't great once again. 3,600 yards is very low. 27 touchdowns, 10 picks isn't the worst, but that's not great. What's his overall up to? He's up to a 71, so he's developing pretty quickly, but he just isn't playing very well. Christian McCaffrey was pretty great. 1,200 yards, 4.7 yards per carry, eight touchdowns. Debo Samuel, 300 rushing yards. Brock Purdy, 350. Elijah Mitchell even got in there and had 10 touchdowns. Interesting. Receiving, of course, was pretty low because it looks like we didn't pass much at all. Brandon Ayuk had just under 1,000 yards, 982 and six touchdowns. Debo Samuel with 975 and five. George Kittle with only 743 and six touchdowns. Deontay Harris, glad he didn't have one more yard and eight touchdowns. Blocking, it wasn't great, honestly. The tackles were a touch bit better by one sack each this year, but Spencer Beerford and Emila Kior were very bad. Six sacks from each of them. Aaron Banks was very good this year, so I don't get it. It's very inconsistent. Now defensively, Fred Warner led the team with 138 tackles. Tackles, Noah Sewell with 111, that's nice. Tackles for loss, 15 from Eric Armstead, 12 from Javon Kinlaw, 11 from Nick Bosa. And sacks, Nick Bosa with only 12. Why is he playing so much worse for me? Why can't he play well like he normally does? This is stupid. I mean, he was still good, obviously, but not record-breaking sack numbers like he normally gets. Eric Armstead had a very good year in his last year here, of course, with 11 and a half sacks. Yannick Ngakwe was a very good signing, getting eight and a half sacks. I knew he would be. Javon Javon Kinlaw once again with three sacks, and then Fred Warner had five picks which led the team. Talanoa Hufanga, Ambry Thomas, and Jamel Dean with two, and a number of players with one. We had the 28th best offense in terms of yards. That's not great. And second best defense. We were 27th in points scored and first in points allowed. So we had the best defense and one of the worst offenses. We're like the Broncos, basically. Wow, that's a top three. Good lord. Matthew Stafford wins MVP. Trevor Lawrence at number number two, Cooper Cup at number three. I have never received, I've never seen a receiver up here, let alone at number three for MVP. I'll have to check what he did. Jonathan Taylor up here, but no 49ers, unfortunately. Offensive player of the year, of course, goes to the white boy Cooper Cup as always. No 49ers. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Fred Warner at number three. Drew Sanders as a rookie up there. Interesting. Rakeem Jarrett wins offensive rookie of the year on the Saints. That's interesting. No 49ers. And defense Defensive Rookie of the Year, of course, goes to Drew Sanders. Noah Sewell at number six. Interesting. But like I was saying, I want to see what Cooper Cup did. Did he get like 2,500 yards? Oh my god, 52 touchdowns for Matthew Stafford. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> whoever said Madden was unrealistic? 20, yeah, about 2,500 yards for Cooper Cup. I was exaggerating, but no. Yeah, he had about 2,500 yards. And 32, you heard that right, 32 touchdowns. Hmm, um, <laughs> that's a season to say the least. I think he broke every record this year. I think Michael Thomas has the record for receptions with like 144. Does Cooper Cup have the record for receiving yards in real life or is it Calvin Johnson still? I don't know. And then receiving touchdowns is Randy Moss with like 24 or something. So I think he broke every record here. <laughs> That's interesting. Let's forget we ever saw that and let's get into the playoffs here against the Bucks. We have an upgrade here, just Taylor Rapp, but hey, that could be the difference maker in this game. I don't know. I don't know how to feel about 
about this game, man. But we have a one last hurrah scenario, so this is gonna be for Trent Williams, obviously, who honestly isn't playing super well here. 10 sacks last year, nine sacks this year, so it's not gonna be the biggest destruction of the team in the world. Yeah, it's Trent Williams like I expected. Brock, that haircut is so terrible. It's like a mullet, but it's also weird in the front. I, I don't know. So we get 10 morale or whatever. We have a first of many scenario. I don't remember what these are. Are these just staff points? Uh, we'll go play it cool. Definitely don't wanna guarantee a win because we're probably gonna get smoked because we have the better record. We're a better team. Sounds like a recipe to get smoked in Madden. So let's jump in against the Bucks and let's see if we can, ah, should I jump in? I'm not gonna jump in yet, actually. We're just gonna simulate this one because it is only year two. I am hoping to make the playoffs next year, but let's see if we can get a win against the Bucks. And we do, we destroy them 31 to 10. So we're gonna be taking on the division rival LA Rams in the divisional, facing our division in the divisional. They're 11 and six, but we have six overall on them. Our defense is four overall better. Our offense is seven overall better. I guess they have Cooper Cup, so I don't know. We'll see. Again, we'll check out the one last hurrah. Fucking, I, I don't know. I think it just gives us 10 more morale, right? Okay, yeah, we take those. And first of many is just staff points, right? Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna simulate again, but if we get into the conference championship, I will jump in. I don't think we're going to, but I will if we do. And we do. We win 24 to 21 against the Rams, so I guess I'll jump in here. I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, maybe I don't want to because we've been winning while not jumping in, but I'll jump in and ruin the run we're having right now. Plus 10 more morale. What's our team looking like actually before we jump in here with all the morale and development and everything? So we have Brock Purdy up to a 74, Christian McCaffrey to 99. We're looking very nice. Darnell Wright unfortunately does only have star, but should still develop. And defensively, Noah Sewell also unfortunately does have star, but overall our defense is looking very nice as well. But we're going to be taking on the Packers in the conference championship. They are a hot opponent, apparently, at 14 and 3, so makes sense. We'll go be confident, as always. Never go insult opponent. It literally just gives them stuff and takes stuff from you. And Emila Kior gets an upgrade, but let's jump in against the Packers, and let's see if we can get a win. All right, here we go in Green Bay against the Green Bay Packers. This might be tough. Lambo's a hard one. So let's see if we can get a win against the Packers. We are almost scoreless in the first quarter. The Packers finally do put up a touchdown. We do as well. It looks like we're going down the field. We only get a field goal. This is a low score. We get another touchdown. We are up 24 to 7. We beat and they asked 24 7. 24 to 10. It's not a close game. We are going to win 31 to 10 to move on to the Super Bowl. That was a great game for us. Probably not super fun to watch because we destroyed them, but it looks like Big Cock Brock was pretty good. Didn't pass much, but overall we were pretty good. 69 yards for Christian McCaffrey. Nice. So I believe we get another like morale boost before we get into the Super Bowl from the hot opponent thing, or does this give us XP? It gives us something. Let's go! Exclamation, exclamation. We get plus 10 break tackle, play rec, and tackle for the next game. Now hopefully this actually gives it to us for the Super Bowl because I could see Madden having a glitch where it gives this to us for the Pro Bowl week. I don't know. And we get 2,500 XP. Let's go. So let's see who we're going to be taking on in the Super Bowl. It's going to be the Cincinnati Bengals. Did we play them this year? I feel like we did. And I feel like we lost to them in like week 18. I think I remember seeing that. Uh-oh. Oh, that's exactly what happened. We lost 37 to 41. It was a high scoring game. We did lose, but I feel like we're better now than we were then. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just coping. L plus ratio plus C plus cope plus you fell off. I don't know. But that's a lot of upgrades here. Good Lord. Every coach's dream is to ho hoist the Lombardi trophy as confetti rains down. Whatever. That's corny. Um, it is technically just the beginning because this is only year two. I guess it's not the beginning. It's the middle, but uh, you, you, you know what I mean. We have an upgrade for Javon Kinlaw. We'll see if that makes a difference. I don't know, but here we go. Let's jump in against the C Cincinnati Bengals and let's see if we can take them down. We have three overall on them, but they did be beat us in the season. Let's see if we can beat them. All right, here we go in the Super Bowl against the Cincinnati Bengals. What stadium are we at? We're at Allegiant Stadium. Okay, so knowing that, we're probably gonna lose to some missed calls from the refs to cover the spread because uh, we all know how those Raiders games have been going lately. If you didn't see the one yesterday, that might have been the most rigged game I have ever seen in my life. And not to mention the night game, the Commanders and Giants was terrible too. I feel like, I, tw I put this on Twitter, I feel like every game feels a little rigged now and completely decided by the refs. I mean, the Giants won because of the refs yesterday.
say. The Raiders won because of the refs and have been winning like every game lately because of the refs. They have that Las Vegas advantage, you know? Gotta cover the spread there, but I, I don't know. I'm not gonna ramble about that. We have a Super Bowl to play. Let let's jump in here. Smooth transition. We go up 3-0. They tied up 3-3. We take the lead 10-3. We go up 7 24-3. 31-3. This is not close. Um, Hopefully we do not pull an Atlanta Falcons and choke. No, we're up 38-3. 45 to 13. Yeah, this one is out of hand for the Bengals. We win 45 to 20, winning our first Super Bowl of the rebuild. I don't think I've ever won a Super Bowl in year two. So Big Cock Brock is now a Super Bowl champion, potential Super Bowl MVP with how the score went. This was an amazing game for us. It looks like all orange in the stadium, but hey, it is what it is. We're the winning team. George Kittle with the ugly helmet. Christian McCaffrey wins Super Bowl MVP. That makes sense. 142 yards, three touchdowns. That's an insane stat line. So no MVP for Brock Purdy. Makes sense. He wasn't stellar, but he was fine. But yeah, Christian McCaffrey pretty much single-handedly won us the game. He was a beast. Brandon Ayuk was our leading receiver with 104 yards. It looks like we got a ton of sacks on them. Two from Yannick Ngakwe, a sack and a half from Javon Kinlaw in his last game as a 49er. One from Nick Bosa, half from Eric Armstead. Two picks, one each from Ambry Thomas, Fred Warner. That was an amazing Super Bowl for us at the very least. So with that, I think Trent Williams is going to retire, unfortunately, but the potential retirement of left tackle Trent, wait, 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 what? Continues to inspire the team, plus 15 morale for the, the Super Bowl's over. Why does it give us that now? It didn't show that before. Oh my God, this game is gonna give me a fucking aneurysm, dude. What is this? What is this? All right, now he retires. <sighs> that would have been nice to have. I mean, we destroyed him anyways, but still. Trent Williams will retire following the Super Bowl. Does that mean he will retire after the Super Bowl or he will retire now? Nope, it means he will retire after the Super Bowl, as if the Super Bowl hasn't already happened. Now this might be his retirement. You're like three messages behind. You're forever a champion. Yeah, no shit. World champs, all cap. Okay, good lord. This game has some issues, dude. Now he retires <laughs> three messages later. Oh my god. <laughs> so unfortunately for us, this last year might not be super easy, because we're gonna lose like half Half the team. But hey, it doesn't matter. We already won a Super Bowl. Nothing else matters at this point. We could go 0 in 17 this year. I don't care. We still won a Super Bowl. It's still a successful rebuild, but this is about trying to repeat. So obviously we have to re-sign Nick Bosa, and it looks like we can. He's still very interested. We have a ton of money now, so we'll see if he takes player friendly, and he does. Beautiful. And actually, it even looks like we can re-sign Eric Armstead, who I definitely want back. We'll see two years, and he takes it. He was very good this last year. Javon Kinlaw, I'm a bit iffy on because he hasn't been all that good. We'll check out free agency. We'll see if there's a better player we can get there, but I might just re-sign him. But speaking of that, let's get to free agency and let's see what we can do. So in free agency, there isn't, hmm, there are definitely a lot of good players. Let's take a look at the team real quick. So obviously the offensive line is looking a little rough, especially after the retirement of Trent Williams. So that's definitely a point we probably want to upgrade on the team. And defensively, I mean, we really only need defensive tackle, and honestly, we're good. Maybe a corner, maybe a safety, but I mean, we're looking really nice. How did Taylor Rapp do? I don't remember. Five deflections, 27 catches allowed. I think he had the most, def or second most deflections on the team. Honestly, he was pretty good. I don't think we need to upgrade there. He didn't get a pick, but overall was pretty solid, at least in terms of coverage, it looks like. So, I mean, shit, really, all it looks like we need is offensive line and a defensive tackle, and then that's it. So, I think these are the two signings we're going to try to make. First is going to be Chris Lindstrom. Obviously, we had shaky guard play last year and the year before, to be honest. So we're going to try to bring in Chris Lindstrom. Hopefully, he can do well. He's not the most expensive ever. We're only paying him like 16 per year, if I had to guess, which isn't bad for one of the best guards in the league. We do have the lead for him. We have a full five bars over the Bears. And then Ed Oliver is going to be the other player we're going for. Again, full five bars. He is very interested. We're offering him about 10 and a half per year, if I had to guess 11 because I did go player friendly or no I just went neutral so it's about 9.57 per year or whatever so we'll see if we can get these two they both sign and they both sign with us so those are two huge pickups do I smell a repeat anyone here in the draft we obviously have the 32nd overall pick because we won the Super Bowl I don't know what I'm going 
to do here at all, but I'll try my best to make a good pick. <laughs> this guy looks decent. Looks like a really good run blocker, but I'm worried about his pass blocking. Has really good awareness impact. You know, this guy looks really good. Let's take him. Elite for a lot of things there. He has hidden dev, 90 strength, 72 speed. Kind of looks like an athletic freak and a really good player. That could be a really good pick. Plus, he's wearing number 69. Let's go. In the second round, I think I'm going to go Demetrius Boyce. He's 6'2", 287, 21 years old out of Oklahoma. Ran a 4'8", 6", first in vertical jump, 34 reps on the bench at the combine. Looks like a really athletic player. B awareness, A play rack, A finesse moves, B tackle. Let's take him, and he has hidden dev. He looks like a really good player. I don't think he's going to see the field much, but looks good at the very least. And I think that's just going to be the last pick I make, unless there is one player still left. Okay, he is still here. I don't know his speed, so he could be bad, actually. Oh, he's really slow. Oh, maybe he's not all that good. I just saw the A hit power, A to C tackle, B to D man, but you know what? I don't know what else to do. Let's take him. Normal dev, 83 speed. Um, maybe not the best. We'll see. So here is a recap of the draft. Malcolm McLeod is a 73 overall. Not bad at all. Not a very good pass blocker. Not much power to his game, but overall looks good. I guess he isn't that good at blocking in general. Just kind of an athletic freak. Good impact block, good lead block. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see how he does. I don't know if I feel comfortable with playing him at left tackle, though. As a, what, 63 overall pass? Per yeah, no, I don't know about that one. I might move our right tackle over to left. Demetrius Boyce is a 71 overall. What is his overall if I move him to defensive end, though? It's a 70, so he goes down, but yeah, yeah, we'll leave him at defensive tackle. He's not a scheme fit there, but that's fine. He has a 71 overall, like I was saying, though. Pretty good strength, speed, really good finesse move. 79 as a rookie is really nice, so you love to see that. Now, at that point, I probably should have just stopped picking. Matthew Childers is a 65 overall. Steven Pitts is a 63, and that's where I stopped picking. And the CPU actually took two good receivers. Jeremy Clifford at a 72 overall. Does only have normal, but overall looks good. Pretty fast, good hands, really good slot receiver. And then Ladarius Dunn, who is a playmaker, so he is a scheme fit. Good ball carrier vision, change of direction. I'm sure the 49ers in real life would turn him into a monster, but we don't, we don't really need him here. It'll be like a sixth receiver at best. Here is a look at the team going into the third and final year of the rebuild. We are looking very nice. Offensively, we do have some pretty decent changes, I guess. We're going to be bringing in Chris Lindstrom, obviously. Malcolm McLeod at right tackle, number 69, of course. Nice. And then Darnell Wright at left tackle, moving him over there because I don't want to play Malcolm McLeod at left. Obviously, overall, this offense is looking very nice, and this defense is looking even better. Corners were looking good. Ambry Thomas is a bit shaky, but I do expect him to play well. Our D-line plays very, very well. Obviously, we brought in Ed Oliver. We brought Eric Eric Armstead back and Demetrius Boyce should be a really good player. So that went from looking like potentially our weakest position to one of our strongest position. We have Nick Bosa at a 99, obviously Fred Warner at a 96, 97 with morale. This team is really good, but let's get to the mid-season point of year number three. Now, of course, before I reveal how we did in year number three of the rebuild, again, just be sure to like and sub. It's so easy for you to do and it helps me out a ton. 1,350 subs, 110 likes and I will be very happy. And again, imagine if everyone did it. We would literally be at like 3,000 subscribers, fucking 1,000 likes. Like, it would be really nice. So be sure to do that. I would appreciate that very much. But here's a look at the team before we jump in. I think you can tell we did well from all the morale, but we're looking very good at an 88 overall. Here's a look at the defense. Also looking very nice. Fred Warner getting close to a 99. It would be cool if he could hit that before we end the rebuild, but we do make the playoffs at 10 and 7. Not as good as our team overall is. I think we should have been much better, but we will be taking on Green Bay in the wild card. Now, real quick, let's check out the stats. I'm not going to spend much time on this. So Brock Purdy, once again, wasn't amazing. 3,600 yards, 26 touchdowns, 9 picks. Not terrible, but not amazing. Christian McCaffrey, 1,100 yards, 6 touchdowns, 5.1 yards per carry. Debo was our leading receiver with 1,200 yards, 9 touchdowns.
touchdowns. Kittle was actually our second receiver with 800 yards, seven touchdowns. Brandon Ayuk wasn't all that good, which is kind of surprising. Blocking, Darnell Wright was very bad at left tackle, and Malcolm McLeod wasn't much better at right. Arguably worse because he's playing a slightly easier position. Emil Akior was bad, but our guards were very good at the very least. Now defensively, Fred Warner led the team with 130 tackles, tackles for loss. We had 18 from Bosa, Armstead, and Oliver, 10 from Ngakwe, and then sacks. We had a lot of them. 20 from Nick Bosa, 14 from Eric Armstead, 7.5 from Yannick Ngakwe, 7 from Ed Oliver. All of them are huge players toward the success of this rebuild. Now interceptions, Fred Warner, Charvarius Ward, and Jamel Dean each had three. Dre Greenlaw with two, and Talano Hufanga and Taylor Rapp each had one. So very good year. Once again, bad offense. I'm guessing really good defense. Patrick Mahomes wins MVP. Teddy Bridgewater on the Giants at number 10, but no 49ers. Offensive player of the year, of course, goes to the white boy Cooper Cup. I saw Debo at number three. No other 49ers. Defensive player of the year, of course, goes to Nick Bosa having a monster year with 20 sacks. Eric Armstead at number eight. I think he had 14 sacks. Joe Saunders of the Eagles wins rookie of the year. No 49ers. And defensive rookie of the year, we could have someone up here. It goes to George Brown of the Cardinals. No 49ers, unfortunately, but this was a very good year, number three. I'm just gonna simulate these games out. We do have an upgrade here. I think this is for Debo and Demetrius Boyce. That's a pretty big one too. I wonder what his dev trade is. I guess it might reveal towards the end of the year. We'll see. If not, no big deal, but let's see if we can take down the Packers. And we do 34 to 31. So we're gonna have a big rivalry game in the divisional round. It's gonna be 49ers Cowboys, the good old 1990s matchup. No scenarios here for us to check out. So let's just simulate it straight to the conference championship. I'll jump into the Super Bowl if we make it. We do beat the Cowboys and we're going to be taking on the 12 and 5 Bears in the conference championship. This is pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever seen the Bears do well. So this is very interesting. I'm tempted to jump in, but I don't want to yet. If we lose, we lose. We already have a Super Bowl, but let's see if we can make another one. And we do. We win 31 to 24 and we're going to be taking on Kansas City in the Super Bowl. Rematch of, wait, no, the 49ers played the, who did the 49ers play in the Super Bowl like three years ago? Was that the Bucks or was that the Chiefs? I get, hold on. Okay, yeah, it was the Chiefs. They lost 31 to 20, but we'll see if we can win this one. We're gonna jump in, like I said. Shut up, phone, dumb bitch. Um, but we have an upgrade here before we jump into the Super Bowl. This could be two Super Bowls. This could be pretty huge. So let's get this started. Let's jump in and let's see if we can take down Kansas City. Now we do have the overall advantage but we all know that doesn't really mean much in Madden at least, but let, let's just see what we can do. Mikey McDingle might be a two-time Super Bowl champ in this rebuild. I probably just jinxed it, but we'll see. All right, here we go in the Super Bowl at AT&T Stadium. Let's simulate this out and let's see if we can take down Kansas City. So no scoring so far in the first quarter. We put up three. They put up a touchdown, unfortunately. We put up a touchdown. We have the lead 10-7. They take it back. Ooh, and they're kind of pulling away, but we do get a field goal. At least it's 21-13 right now. Whoa, we score really quick. It's 28-19. We put up a field goal and it looks like we're unfortunately gonna lose. 28-22. to But very close Super Bowl. We already got one, so this one would have just been extra. You always want to win a Super Bowl, obviously, but we already got one. Almost two. This is probably the best team I've ever rebuilt. In terms of overall success, everything. This is probably the best team. But of course, that is the end of today's rebuild. A very successful one. Winning a Super Bowl, almost winning two. Here's one last look at the team before we close this out. But again, of course, if you have not already for some reason and you made it all the way here, like, subscribe, and let me know what team to do next. Because if I pick your comment, I will give you a shout out. I'll sub to you, everyone else will sub to you. It's a win-win-win. Same with subscribing to me. You help me out, you get good videos, that's a win too. Everything's a win when you're part of my channel, you know what I'm saying? But of course, as always, I hope you did enjoy. This was a very entertaining one. And as always, I will see you guys again in the next video. Goodbye.